My name is Ruth Gravel. I work with clients through hypnotherapy, regression, and quantum healing hypnosis technique. Quantum healing is a hypnotherapy method which facilitates you to access a higher, wiser part of your consciousness, sometimes called the superconscious, to find answers to your personal, spiritual, and physical health-related questions. This All About Self-Healing podcast gives me the opportunity to share some examples of how I have worked with clients using the quantum healing approach. This first podcast, Parkinson's Disease to Ease, includes some anonymized transcript from a quantum healing hypnosis therapy session with Deepak, a gentleman in his 60s who was diagnosed with Parkinsonism a decade ago. Whilst many clients attend just one QHHT session, a decision was made at our initial meeting for Deepak to attend a series of sessions. Before I start with Deepak's session, I would like to say for anyone new to QHHT, it is necessary to acknowledge that this method of therapy assumes no limitations to self-healing, not even a medical diagnosis. Therefore, an open mind is very helpful. For it only takes a blush to acknowledge the rapid connection of mind and body. Our thoughts, examples of psychosomatic pain, the placebo and non placebo effects, a panic attack or phobia, all provide clarity that what we think, unconsciously and consciously, very much influences our health and well-being, as does the quality of our water, nutrition, sleep, exercise and physical environment, as does self-care and self-love. If we acknowledge the current scientific evidence that finds up to 95% of our brain functions are unconscious, including our beliefs, automatic responses and habits, the foundations of which were largely programmed during our formative years, then it can be liberating news to recognise that we can identify and change unconscious thoughts and beliefs that no longer serve us well today. And now I move to our case study. The extracts I initially include are from the first session with Deepak, not when he was in a deeply hypnotic state, but speaking from the comfortable therapy chair. We started with a conversation to gauge where Deepak was in terms of his perceived current health, and here is part of the transcript. The objective of this first session is mainly to relax, I explained. Deepak, yep. That's the one thing I've never been able to do. Ruth, ah, yet. Deepak, yes, yet, that's good. A lot of the time I get so stiff and I say, relax, relax. He recalled ticking himself off. Ruth, you feel that relaxing is the one thing that you've never been able to do. Deepak, well, no one ever explained to me what relaxing is. Ruth, although I think you relax easily when you are in a meditation. Yes, it's wonderful, really. Pause. And I know I'm getting worse losing the words. In that short extract, Deepak has shared some thoughts in stating that he'd never been able to relax and that he knew he was getting worse losing words. He'd also told himself off, relax, relax. His communications came from his conscious and unconscious belief system and the aches and pains and frustrations he has experienced. My work for this session was to start enabling him, hopefully, to relax and to recognise that positive changes are possible. This is how we continued. Ruth, OK, so I know it sounds potty according to popular modern medicine, But you know of Dolores Cannon, who I trained with as a QHHT practitioner, Deepak, yes. Ruth, she says there are no limits to self-healing, except our own thoughts, Deepak. I agree with that completely. Ruth, so whatever limiting beliefs you or I or anybody else may put upon ourselves or any illness, they can be removed, Deepak, yeah. Ruth, the limiting beliefs can be removed, for the body has an incredible ability to heal itself, Deepak. One good thing that came about, one of the Parkinson's doctors said, you're on the honeymoon period at this stage at the moment. Give it five years and that'll be your lot. That was ten years ago. Pause. 
Well, I'm one up on him. I mean, you don't need that negativity, not at the beginning. About a month later, Deepak recalled that he'd misquoted the doctor, who hadn't said that that would be his lot after five years, but had said that Deepak would go downhill after five years. That's how Deepak interpreted what had been said. Whatever had been said, with the prognosis of Parkinson's, what other conclusion would Deepak come to, except to expect to believe that he would gradually become worse as he moved through the various stages? Our conversation continued. Ruth, it's interesting, isn't it, that there have also been many people who have spoken about their experiences, who've completely healed from disease, such as stage four cancer in the case of Anita Mujani, who completely self-healed once she'd recognised the root cause of her disease. And what we believe, and Dolores would agree, that what we believe the universe will give back to us, Deepak. That's a nice thought. I also asked Deepak, just to know where you are right now in terms of understanding your diagnosis of Parkinson's. How do you perceive it? Deepak explained. I perceive it as one of the most insidious diseases going. It's like a cruel animal that you are actually being eaten by slowly, bit by bit, and there's nothing I can do about it. That's what they keep telling me. Just do the exercises, exercises and different therapies. And the thing that's quite difficult with it, and I can explain this better now that I'm getting older, Parkinson's works alongside old age. They're both the same as one another, really, Ruth. Over 60 is more common, isn't it? Deepak, yes, but it's starting to get younger. There are some kids in their 20s with it. Deepak also informed me about some possible medical procedures that were being researched and then described how the medication can make him feel. Deepak, with medication, they give you enough drugs to knock you out, so you're walking around like a zombie. I don't fancy that too much. Ruth, the balance of drugs you've got at the moment, isn't that? No, that's very low. Ruth, so you want to keep it low, or lower still, or Deepak, yeah, yeah, well, I might come off them, you never know. Ruth, do you like swimming, Deepak? No, because the doctor said you've got to be very careful swimming with Parkinson's, because you may lose your balance in the water. Deepak also explained further that swimming would involve too much assistance to get changed and to get into the pool at that time. He just wasn't prepared to consider swimming with an assistant as a possible exercise to enjoy. In addition to our discussion at this first session, Deepak also enjoyed a relaxing, guided meditation, which in itself is healing, to slow the breathing and to lower the heart rate and to relax, which he did. We went on to plan the next session for which he was to prepare a series of questions for me to ask his higher self or his superconscious mind. I explained to Deepak that he could ask anything he liked and gave him some examples of questions such as I've had Parkinson's diagnosed since 20XX Why is that? Can it be healed? And now I continue to describe Deepak's therapy the following week After going through the questions he had prepared for me to ask his higher self and hearing his feedback and experiences following the first session Deepak enjoyed experiencing a past life regression. Deepak was very relaxed in the regression and we just went with the flow. For we must not try to make our clients' or patients' words match our belief system. The important thing is to recognise or to keep an open mind about concept that we have a higher self, the wiser self, which is consciously accessed during the hypnotherapy session. The wisdom of the higher self becomes obvious as Deepak's story unfolds. Deepak had just arrived in the past life, which can be experienced rather like a lucid dream. Ruth, and what's the first thing you see? Deepak, stone paving. Stone paving? What else do you notice there? Deepak, a pair of legs. I'm looking down at bandaged legs. A pair of bandaged legs. Are they your bandaged legs? Do you notice? Deepak, no. So as you look down and see the pair of bandaged legs, what else do you notice, Deepak? There's like a mosaic of tiles and colours and bits 
and pieces put together to make like a collage. Ruth, what different colours do you see there? Mauves and reds and whites and greens. What time of day would you say it is, Deepak? It's the afternoon sun. Ruth, ah, the afternoon sun. You've seen one pair of legs and some mosaics so far. What else do you notice as you look around you, Deepak? I'm actually being beckoned forward. Asked to come forward through the stone gate. Ruth, who's beckoning you? Deepak, it's a man, but he's trying to adjust focus. He's standing upside down, like a camera going in reverse. Now he's twisting round. Ruth, please describe some more about your environment. Deepak, it's like a stone wall going round, and it's an entrance to a gate to a city. What do you see and hear as you look and listen, Deepak? Lots of people gathering, like it's a market day, and there's cattle getting led through. They're preparing for a festival. They've got the large heads, Ruth. The large heads, Deepak. The large painted heads. They're sort of dancing round the festival. They're dressed in colours, Ruth. And do you have a body? Do you see your feet? as you look down there. Yes, I've got sandals and big toes, men's feet, old feet. Ruth, what colour is your skin, Deepak, olive? Ruth, and as you get sense of the rest of your body, what do you sense with your legs? Deepak, they're quite skinny. I feel not frail, but old. I know this place. We've left that scene now and we've moved forward to another place. My home was a cave. It's strange going back. It was nothing special. Everything was Spartan, but I chose that. And you can take yourself to a typical mealtime. Deepak, normally it was a bowl of rice, Ruth. Who prepared the bowl of rice, Deepak? The people. Basically, it was just me sitting there, being served by the people. She would come to me each day with food, She had a lovely smile, long black hair. I was amazed why she bothered for someone such as I. Ruth, for someone such as you. How did you feel there, Deepak? Lonely. We've left that scene now and we went to where Deepak worked. I will go to the square, stand upright, take my place, talk about the next coming. There's a proclamation that the light has come. All the many years of devotion at this point, there is a proclamation that the light has come. The festival of light, the fireworks are going off, the bright lights. Ruth, can you describe the scene that you're in, please? Deepak, it's a gathering. There's only 10 people there. We've actually gone into the city itself and it's a large room. The first greeting I got was, welcome, brother. For many years you have been outside the city walls and now we beckon you in because you told the truth and held on to the truth. You stood by that truth and you became that truth. Ruth, you've become that truth. And what do you say when the man greets you with that? How do you feel when he says that to you? Deepak, humble. I think I've actually fulfilled my purpose. Ruth. Do you know this man who spoke with you, Deepak? I've known him for many years. I thought I was ostracised. I stayed at the cave away from the people, keeping to the laws. The laws were laid down by the higher, the man's law. They were laws given to the living and for the dying. Ruth, what kind of laws were they? Do you know? Deepak, as you are, so shall it be. Ruth, and what's happening in that scene now? Deepak, they're talking about old times, being together as one. Ruth, is the festival of light a turning point for people? Deepak, yes, because they're at a turning point. They have acknowledged the light. And how do you feel now? Deepak, relieved. It's such a burden that one stands alone and carries his own thoughts. Ruth, 
Has that changed for you now in this lifetime at that festival, Deepak? Yes, Ruth. Is there anybody else you'd like to connect with there at that scene before we move on? Deepak. A small family. There's a female and a boy and a girl of six and eight. Are they connected with you, Deepak? I think so, because there's emotion running between us. They run towards me and I hug the boy and the girl. Ruth, do you feel like they're related to you, Deepak? Yes, I would say grandfather. The woman is my daughter, Ruth. Is there any more you'd like to glean or experience from where you are at the moment, Deepak? It's another step for man to realise his true potential, man and woman, to realise their true potential, where they come from and where they're going to. We left that scene and we move forward to another important day in that lifetime. Deepak, a breakthrough, standing in front of the crowd, I find myself as an ambassador for the light. Ruth, can you describe the scene, please? Deepak, very rowdy. There seems to be hundreds of people, all jeering and jeering. They're angry. Who do I think I am standing there? Ruth, and how do you feel there as an ambassador? Deepak, actually strong, strong in my belief. Ruth. So you're witnessing the response to these other people, Deepak, yes. Ruth, what do you feel for them? What do you wish for them, Deepak? I feel sorry for them. Ruth, and are you alone now or do you have others standing with you, Deepak? I only know that I've got my spirit with me, my spirit helpers stand with me and I can face them. We move forward to the very last day of that lifetime. Deepak, I'm actually dying. I'm in a room with logs on the fire. There's a crying outside. My daughter is there with me. In that lifetime, I was so lucky to have found love. Love kept me going. Deepak was asked to reflect on that lifetime from beyond. He saw brightness. I stepped into the brightness. It's just a small step. From that lifetime, he learnt that love conquers all. Deepak's higher self explained that he chose that lifetime to show his determination. Deepak's higher self said he does not realise the capabilities that lie within one's soul, for we are all fragments of one's soul. The healing part of the session continued. Ruth, I've got a series of questions that Deepak's put together. May I ask them now, please? Deepak's higher self, yes. Ruth. Deepak has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He asks, why do I have Parkinson's? Deepak's higher self, why do you not have Parkinson's? It sounds very glib to say it like that, for many illnesses attack the body, but they are brought on by confusion of the brain. Ruth, Deepak asks, will there be a cure for him? Deepak's higher self responds, with the right attitude, yes, Ruth. Could you give Deepak some insight about what the right attitude will be, please? Deepak's higher self. He's got to be a bit more gentle on himself to accept the limitations that have been placed upon him, but accept it positively. Ruth. So is this about accepting the health condition he has at the moment that we call Parkinson's? Deepak's higher self. Yes. Ruth. How can he do this, please? Deepak's higher self, by adjusting his thinking. Ruth, can you show him how to adjust his thinking, please? Deepak's higher self, to start each day with a positive attitude. He has pains nearly all the time now, and he's doing very well to cope with the pains. But, as you know from different therapies, they can be controlled by the mind to a point. Because the higher self takes them over, and gets in, and holds them back. Ruth, what would the higher self say to Deepak in terms of having a positive attitude in the mornings? How can he do that, please, Deepak's higher self? Let us in. He's got to let the higher self in. He holds back. Could the higher self please give Deepak a symbolic message or impression about how Deepak can let you in? Deepak's higher self. 
It's by your association with negativity. The balance is wrong. It needs more positivity. For the out, for outsiders, he appears very positive, but negativity has got in. Ruth. How will Deepak remove the negativity, please? Deepak's higher self. We need to flush the mind, and then in turn, that will flush the body of the negativity. I sense that something very positive is happening at the moment. Could you get Deepak to talk about it, please? Deepak's higher self. It's by the use of healing. You've got to be bombarded by positivity. That brings us back to the fear factor. He is still holding on to the fear, Ruth. Could you enable him to let that go if he's ready to? Is Deepak ready to let go of the fear and work in love and the light? In his previous life experience, he saw the festival of light, didn't he? And at this point, I noticed a significant tremor in his arm. As Deepak relaxes now, nothing will harm him in any way as he relaxes and observes this beautiful work. Ruth. Deep relaxation, pause. Is this deep relaxation preparing Deepak? Deepak's higher self. The only way to describe it is like falling out of your body to allow the shell to repair oneself. It's taking a different format. It's quietening everything down, the anxieties. His fears are waning. Ruth, are you able to do this work with him permanently? Is he ready for his fears to wane, Deepak? Yes, permanently, Ruth. So going back to the question, will there be a cure for Deepak's Parkinson's? Deepak's higher self responds, yes. Ruth, thank you. Can you heal Deepak from that, please? Enable him to heal himself? Deepak's higher self, yes, he needs heavy meditation where he can lose his body, come out of his body, and that will give us a chance to heal. Is that work starting right now, in this session? Deepak's higher self, yes. Ruth, can Deepak expect this to heal, please? Deepak's higher self, yes, he can. Ruth, I know that the higher self can do anything, could this be done in a fairly short space of time for Deepak? Deepak's higher self, hmm, sounding, sceptical sounding. That would depend on Deepak. Certain attitudes would have to change. He's got to learn to accept help. He's come up to a point where he will. Deepak is quite stubborn in his attitude. He knows that regular exercise will help. Ruth. Would it help to do exercises daily? Deepak's higher self, yes, gentle exercises. He's got to be careful because along with the exercise comes the pain and the pain will drive the thoughts away. The thing with fear is that the person is in the fear of oneself. It's not the fear of failure, it's actually the fear of completing something. Deepak's higher self, the light all the light, Ruth. Would it be helpful for him to immerse himself in the light? The light of healing, Deepak's higher self. Yes, it's a light of healing, truth and love, silence. Ruth. He says, is my Parkinson's my teacher or my enemy? Deepak's higher self. It's how you look at it. It's your perception, it's not your teacher. From great negativity can come great positivity. Ruth, he says, can I use positive thinking as an attitude, as a tool for healing? Deepak's higher self responds, yes, of course he can. Ruth, he says, how can I serve the great architect to help others now? Deepak's higher self responds, being yourself. Ruth, this is a question I've added. Is it important that Deepak really works on himself and heals himself before helping others? 
or can he do both at the same time? Deepak's higher self, he can do both at the same time as long as he remembers self. That comes first. Ruth, he asks, are my guides a manifestation of my higher self? Deepak's higher self responds, yes, because we are all part of the whole. Ruth, he says, is it possible for me to meet my higher self in person? Deepak's higher self responds, yes, because sometimes there comes a point where you exchange bodies. Ruth, you exchange bodies, Deepak's higher self. So part of you is still left, Ruth. So whilst we're speaking with Deepak's higher self now, are we not? Deepak's higher self, yes, Ruth. So Deepak's higher self is working very closely with him. But it's part of Deepak, isn't it? Deepak's higher self, yes. Deepak asks, why do I need a physical body when we are all spirit? Deepak's higher self, you need a physical body to learn from. It's a learning tool. We learn, you learn. Ruth, Deepak asks, who am I? Deepak's higher self responds, you are a speck of the universe. Ruth, he asks, can spirit feel emotions? Can spirit feel pain? Deepak's higher self responds, is pain an emotion or is emotion a pain? Do you need pain as a teacher? It teaches you how much you can take, how much pain you can inflict by an accident as such. Silence. Ruth. Deepak asks a question, can spirit receive healing from us? Deepak's higher self. We're all joined. We're all part of one. One affects the other in many ways. One life will affect other lives. Pause. Ruth. How important is diet and can you advise him about a healthy diet? Deepak's higher self responds, Diet is very important because of the situation with Parkinson's and the gut. Ruth, can you advise him on a healthy diet, please? Deepak's higher self answers, It's eating seasonally. Ruth, is it healthy to eat processed foods? Deepak's higher self no, there's a disrupted signal between the stomach and the brain. Ruth, will Deepak be enabled to know exactly which foods are healthy for him to eat? Deepak's higher self, the sensitivity of the gut will tell him. Ruth, is this really important, the food thing, in terms of healing? Deepak's higher self, yes, because that keeps everything in balance. Ruth, if he is ready to change his diet to a diet that his body really needs, will that also play a big part in his healing for Deepak? Deepak's higher self, yes, because you are healing the body, the vessel. Are you able to give Deepak some specifics, please, in terms of what he could be eating in his diet? Deepak's higher self, oh, this is a difficult one. This is a big turnaround for Deepak because he has finally realised that I am here. His higher self, the part of him which is speaking now. I am not a figure of his imagination, and we have his good intentions at heart. The realisation hasn't quite dropped into his own thinking. Could you impress that upon him right now, please? I can only describe to you what I am being impressed there is a meeting. It is as if all of the reincarnations of his lines have come around together at a meeting to show him who we were. It's showing him who he is. He is part of the group. There are so many people. They are just reassuring, Ruth. So back to the diet then. What's the best advice for Deepak with diet? He has just got to be very careful because his sensitivity with the gut. Ruth, how can that be healed, please? Deepak's higher self by changing his diet. Ruth, can he start straight away?
He pecks higher self slowly, but gently. He's got to take it slowly because of certain intolerances he's got. Ruth, does he know what they are? Deepak's higher self, no. Ruth, could you tell him what they are? He knows it's chocolate. Ruth, what would happen if Deepak were not to have chocolate? Deepak's higher self, it would actually help the... Then there's silence. Ruth, what would it help? Deepak's higher self, his sugar balance. He's got to bring the balance back. Then balance between the mind and the body and the stomach. Because the vessel is no good if you haven't got the foundations to build on. You cannot sit for hours and be in tune with your stomach. It's a very important part. I think the realisation has come because of the circumstances. Can Deepak see a better direction for himself now, please? The healthier direction for himself now. Deepak's higher self, yes. Ruth, Deepak has also asked, why am I not a happy person when life is so full of joy? Really, it's quite sad, for he has never given himself time to enjoy that happiness. He has been run ragged by himself because of his self-denial. Nobody's fault but his own. He can never be able to step back and just say, well done, Deepak. Ruth, can he do that now? Deepak's higher self, he can now. Ruth, can he make this a very big shift today? Deepak's higher self, he's going to do all that he can in the now. Ruth, Deepak says, this journey I'm on, it's a very lonely journey. Deepak's higher self tells him that his expectations are very high. You've actually got to tone them down a bit because what you expect of people, you'll never quite get. This brought us more or less to the end of the session. Uh, when he came back to the room, we he made sure he was grounded. We had a little chat and then he went home to listen to his audios. This is an example really of a... QHHT session, yet every session is completely different because everybody has different experiences. Deepak has made some wonderful progress and with his permission, further transcripts of our work together can be published. And thank you for joining us today.